Cozy entrepreneurship. What does that even mean? Well, to me, I define that as making enough money to sustain my lifestyle and save slash invest without absolutely pulling my hair out and working insane hours and doing all that crazy stuff and just being able to spend my days intuitively and how I want. That's cozy entrepreneurship to me. And don't get me wrong, I have done the hustle culture really, you know, really, really early mornings and work for 16 hours until late night to build business. That burnt me out and I ended up in the hospital with a stomach virus, long story short. But here we are and cozy entrepreneurship is the phase that I am going through. So in this video, I'm going to give you a little glimpse into one of the days in my life. So let's just get right into it and let me outline the rules throughout the video that I follow to ensure that my cozy entrepreneurship vibe is maintained. And I do want to mention these are just my rules for now in this phase of my life. They are constantly shifting, but this is what I have. So let's get into it. Friday morning Q&A call with my students. Rule number one, stick to what will make me feel good. And don't stress if what I wanted to get done that day didn't get done. At the end of the day, I am the only one holding myself accountable, truly, as an entrepreneur. Why am I making myself feel bad if what I want to get done didn't get done? Unless there was a strict deadline in which I'm gonna get serious repercussions. There is really no reason for me to shame myself or feel bad in any way. So I've just made it a rule to not do that and only stick to what will make me feel good. And I do feel grateful that I am fairly intuitive with myself and I can recognize when what will make me feel good in the moment is what I need to do or if I need to push myself a little bit more and just get something, get a task over with that I've been putting off and that's actually what is best for me <laughs> just because it will feel good in the moment. But whatever that may be in the moment, doing what it's gonna make me feel good. So all this to say is on this day, I actually ended up sleeping in. I had the intention to wake up early and I just slept in like an hour and I was okay with that. I was okay with that because honestly, it was still early. I could still get everything I wanted to get done. And it felt so good to just lay in my bed and to enjoy the sunshine streaming into the window. And that's it. Which leads me to rule number two, which is don't book calls to wake up to. At the start of my entrepreneurial journey, I would literally book my calls at like five in the morning. I would book calls at 5 a.m. because I would book calls with people in Europe who are five hours ahead of me. And I'd be like, yeah, let's do 10 a.m. your time because then it would force me to wake up at 5 a.m. And I would wake up like five minutes before the call and just hop on and get my day started. And that was insane. I mean, I was very hyper productive at that time, but it was hard on my body. And now I don't need like a full extensive morning routine i have a very small morning routine but i do have a morning routine and i make sure to reserve that time for me and not just right into my calls so for right now that's my second rule good thing with unicycle like you don't fall on your face you fall by again wow okay rule number three is to end work before i lose motivation so i actually just made an instagram reel about this but i think it is so important to actually stop working before you are sick of working because then you will end work feeling motivated and excited to go back to working and while you're not working you'll be excited about work and while you are working you'll be enjoying it and that's how you don't burn out so on this particular day i did choose this day because i did more than the average so there was more for me to film but on this day i worked a little bit after i had my morning call 
and then I stopped working but I was still very interested in my work I just stopped working because I wanted to take some space before I went to my networking meeting which you will see very soon hello so as you saw this morning I had a few calls I got ready didn't show you that had breakfast and now wow it's so dark all of a sudden let's walk backwards now I'm walking in a networking meeting Every second Friday, there is a networking meeting that I love to go to, and it's near my house. That's where we're going. Such a beautiful day. And so, um, marketing is, is such a huge piece of what we do as business owners. And you know, I've often said I would like to just sit in the marketing seat of my company. Right? I would like to just be in the marketing role and let someone else. My meeting is done, walking home. We did a little Reiki healing session at the end. This is why I love flowing Fridays because who knows what comes up. And I made a couple, oh my gosh, it's so loud, there's a train. I made a couple of good connections. Someone was looking for Reiki volunteers, so I'm gonna start doing that. And how exciting to get to do all these interesting little things for free just because of the connections I made with people. Rule number four, do what inspires me. So on a daily basis, 90% of my days, I should say 100, but if I'm being more realistic, 90% of my days are days in which I am doing things to make sure I'm inspired, which goes off of rule number three which is to not overwork myself <laughs> and when i leave space to be longing for work and enjoy work i will actually have space for inspiration and creativity but rule four furthers that and ensures that i'm doing something even small things on a daily basis to inspire and create me and put me in that type of headspace so for me that looks like going for walks outside by the water, not having headphones in, just like thinking. Also, the networking meeting that I go to and that was highlighted in this video is one that inspires me. I really like the people there. I like the way they think. I like how encouraging they are. I always leave feeling good, feeling great about the business, about what I'm doing, feeling empowered, feeling inspired. So doing things that put me in that mindset is so important. Rule number four really encapsulates the idea that I always want to be conscious of what I'm doing to inspire myself. Hello, Naomi. This is, this is my amazing VA, Naomi. Everything that I need done, she does, and so much more. Do you <laughs> love working with me, Naomi? <laughs> I absolutely love it. I absolutely love working with you, Chelsea. You are like the most amazing partner to work with. Uh, you make it work very easy. You send content on time, which is good. I'm not for sure. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> And it just makes it easy for me to be able to connect those digital marketing dots for you in your business. Naomi, yeah. you are so amazing. <laughs> and Naomi's also starting her own YouTube channel. I'm gonna link that down below. So you guys definitely need to stalk her. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you for that, Chelsea. <laughs> Bye. Now, rule number five is to leave room for things that are important to me that are not just me centered. So I actually have a couple videos I'll link down in the description for you guys about identifying the pillars in your life that are the most important to you. And I think this is so important to do, but my three pillars that are very important to me in my life are in no particular order, health, relationships, and business. So I'm always focusing on the business one. In my past, I've honestly, like I think hustle culture really promotes only focusing on your business and kind of not taking into consideration the other pillars. But for the cozy entrepreneurship life that I want, I wanna make sure I live a well-rounded life because yes, I have goals and I will attain them and I want to attain them, but 
that doesn't take away the fact that I should and I do enjoy my life in the present moment and I have everything I need already. That's truly the power of manifesting as well. But on this day, on Friday in the evening, I did have plans with my sister and that for me fulfilled the relationship bucket and that relationship bucket can look different with different people every day in different capacities because sometimes I don't have the capacity to go out and hang out with someone for hours rather a simple text to my mom to make her feel good is me fulfilling that relationship pillar for me in that day or even my personal relationship so taking time out to do something alone by myself can be me fulfilling that relationship pillar that day whatever it is that I need I will make sure to fill that pillar and I I will also make sure I fulfill the health pillar, whether that's working out, working on my physical health, working on my mental health, going to therapy, whatever it could be, making sure that all of those buckets are filled is an, a non-negotiable rule for me on a daily basis now. Overall, that's my cozy entrepreneurship life. If you're not part of my WhatsApp group, by the way, and you want the framework that I outlined here, definitely add yourself to the whatsapp group all the frameworks that i create for my youtube videos are in there plus more link in the description and also if you made it to this point of this video make sure to check out this video here you will definitely enjoy that and let me know down below what your rules are do you resonate with cozy entrepreneurship i love this term when i first heard it i was like yes i totally get what that is and i love it if you made it to this point in the video please put down a plant emoji i have so many plants behind me i want to see what emoji you guys put and i will get a sense of your personality through that and i will talk to you guys very soon have a great day i'll see you in my next video bye